No, Bon Bon. I expect you to cry. Written by Hotel Chicken on the 9th of September, 2019. You are the mystifying and simultaneously terrifying villain, Oculus Sinister. You are the best villain in the whole world, despite what the Smiles Top 10 Villain List says. That list is totally biased and rigged anyway, and it definitely doesn't matter that the cookie culprit is on the list, and you aren't. You don't care, because you have it all. Bits, success, power, magic, and a seemingly unlimited supply of henchmen that consisted of hardworking diamond dogs. You are the greatest villain to grace this wretched, harmonious world you unfortunately have to call home. And of course, the best villain needs the best archenemy. Agent Sweetie Drops has been your archenemy for the past five years. Though she wasn't your first, you would die happily if she was your last. You've been through a lot together over the course of a few years. From grand schemes of world conquest to petty theft, she was there to thwart you almost every time, and you reveled in it. Each loss was a minor victory, a new move in this game of chess. Evil chess. You two had something really special. It's truly a shame that your special figurative song and dance will end tonight as you prepare to finally kill Agent Sweetie Drops. You've pulled out all the stops for tonight to make it truly memorable. You have the acid pit, magic lasers, sharks, saw blades, manticores, bears with machetes, and an all-you-can-eat buffet for the henchmen. You even have a fireworks display and a commissioned painting of Agent Sweetie Drops ready for her funeral, along with a very nice eulogy speech set up. You have everything ready. Your only concern is the villain song. You have the choreography down pat, but you were never a really good singer. However, you're going to do your best because you'll be damned if you didn't make tonight something special. A fitting end to your favorite foe. Sitting patiently in your swivel chair of evil, facing a wall of magic mirrors showing the outside of your impenetrable fortress, you wait for your enemy to walk into your lion den, both literally and figuratively. And of course, like she always does, or ever did after tonight, she falls for your trap. Her failed attempt to sneak up on you, springing your falling cage trap. This is it. You're going to turn around and let this final battle of wit commence. You adjust the eye patch on your right eye, making sure to look as evil and menacing as possible for this moment, and press the automatic swivel button on your chair. You begin to slowly spin around to face her. The quiet sound of pistons and gears makes your heart skip a beat. Setting the mood with a maniacal chuckle, you begin your monologue. Ah, Agent Sweetie Drops, it's so fortunate of you to... Your words are cut off by a silent sniffling coming from the cage. It's... it's Agent Sweetie Drops. She's... she's crying? You did not expect this at all. Insults and playful banter, sure, but this? This is completely out of character and out of your comfort zone. Um, Agent Sweetie Drops? He asks hesitantly. Her sobbing intensifies into a full-blown crying fit. Crud, you were not prepared for this at all. Uh, I'm, I'm a te terrible man friend. She managed to gasp out between sobs. Oh, Buck, something happened with Lyra. Changely dung. Agent Sweetie Drops was fun before she started dating Lyra. 
It was all fine and dandy at first, but then, all of a sudden, she starts ditching your latest schemes to go on dates? And it only got worse. Suddenly, she could only work weekdays, and you had to entirely redo your villain's schedule to accommodate her. You would have full-napped Lyra, maybe even use her as a hostage. But you knew crossing that line wouldn't make this fun anymore. Suddenly, it would become serious, and Agent Sweetie Drops would curse you out instead of throwing playful banter at you. I could just die! Agent Sweetie Drops screams over her tears. Okay, you can salvage tonight. You can still kill her. You can still... Uh, bucket. She spoiled the mood with real-world problems. Sighing, you get up from your swivel chair of evil and trot over to the cage Agent Sweetie Drops is in. Um, Agent Sweetie Drops? Is something bothering you? You ask. In response, she cries even louder, barely making her words coherent. <laughs> I told her I didn't want my photo in a newspaper! And and I got upset because of my secret, my, my secret identity, and, and <laughs> I'm a terrible mere friend. She breaks down into tears again. Newspaper? Oh, right, you forgot you saw her in the newspaper this morning. It was an advertisement for her little bakery down in Ponyville. Even though she's your arch enemy, you have to admit... She makes a mean double fudge dark chocolate brownie. Mmm, dark chocolate. The most diabolical of chocolate. Wait, no time to think about evil chocolate. You need to reassure Agent Sweetie Drops. Maybe tonight could be salvaged. Ah, Is that all, Agent Sweetie Drops? I'm sure that you two... She broke up with me! She interrupts you with a shocking revelation. Lyra dumped Agent Sweetie Drops. You had thought, no, hoped, that they could break up. But you never thought Lyra would be the one to do it. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> she kicked me out! And, and now I don't have a mare friend or a home. I should just die! She screams. Oh. You wanted nothing more than to kill her tonight, but right now you want nothing more than to stop her from doing something stupid. Trotting back to your swivel chair of evil, you press the convenient lift cage button. Even as the top of the cage slowly lifts up into the support beams up above, Agent Sweetie Drops is still sitting there, wallowing in her own sadness like a little filly. What should you even do? Emotions were never your forte. Damn it, you're a cold calculated villain, not a cold calculated therapist. Raising a hoof to her shoulder, you attempt to consolidate your longtime rival. Shh, shh. I'm sure everything will be okay, Aiden Sweetie Drops. <laughs> no, it won't! She doesn't love me anymore! I'm the worst! She starts crying. And you honestly take offense at her last statement. If anyone was the worst, it would be you. And it is you. You grab both of her shoulders with your hooves and bring her gaze to yours as you glare into her tear-filled eyes. Now listen here, you smile agent scum. You are not the worst, nor will you ever be the worst. You are an agent of smile, so act like it, daggit. She stopped crying. This is good. This is good. Now you can... Nope. Nope. She's crying again. Well, there goes your last chance to salvage tonight. It took a bit of convincing, but you managed to get Agent Sweetie Drops onto your couch of comfortable chaos. You wrapped her in a fluffy pink blanket henchman number 17 got you as a secret half-swarming present and offered her some hot cocoa with yellow marshmallow chicks in it. You know she likes that for some odd reason, although you can't fathom why she would enjoy such a frankly disgusting combination. At least now, 
She seemed to calm down a bit, only sniffling every now and then, but her face still painted a vivid picture of her thoughts. She has become a mare who has given up. You were just her literal shoulder to cry on a few minutes ago, and now you need to be the metaphorical shoulder, too. So, are you feeling better? You ask. It takes a moment for her to respond, sniffling a bit. Y yeah. Her voice is still shaky. Do you want to talk about it? It's... It's just... It's just... I don't know what to do, Sid. You hated that nickname. But whatever, that's not important right now. She continues talking about how she totally screwed up. I want to be more open with life, but I'm scared. Oh, gosh, I shouldn't have wiped her memory after that wedding. I should have just told her the truth then and there. Maybe, maybe she'll understand? She asks, hoping for your reassurance. On any other day, you drink her tears after taking a picture of her to commemorate the moment, but tonight, you're content with your cocoa. Taking a quick sip, you look her in the eyes with your one good evil, your one evil eye. Honestly, you say, I don't know. Perhaps you're right, perhaps you're wrong. What's important is that you make it right, Miss Sweetie Drops. So what if your relationship started off as a cover story? It might have been an elaborate cover at first, but I believe it grew into something more for you. You gained genuine feelings for her. Heck, you changed the memories of her kindergarten teacher so she could remember you two growing up, and Miss Carpenter has Alzheimer's. Honestly, you didn't need to go that far, but you did. You did it for her. If that's not dedication to the job, then it could only be true love. But what if she hates me now, Sin? She spent so much money on that ad and I just got upset with her. I'm a ter- If you finish that sentence, then I will bring the machete-wielding bears out. You half-heartedly joke in a serious tone. The other half really wants to get your bits worth on those rental bears. But again, that Fluttershy mare probably wouldn't be too happy if she found out what you did with them. As Agent Sweetie Drop stifles a small laugh, you notice her wringing her hooves together. Is it, is it, is it okay if I stay here tonight? She asks you. You're slightly taken aback by her question. Part of you wants to outright refuse her and kick her to the curb. May even throw a party for her feeling bad. But another part of you, that disgusting, sympathetic, Pathetic part of you gives you a moment's pause. I say no, say no. Sure, you sheepishly say. It's official. You are the worst villain and not in a good type of way. You hardly wonder if Professor Doctor ever had to deal with things like this before you depart for the night and leave Agent Sweetie Drops to her own devices. She would go back to Lyra, talk to her. Maybe apologize, and then you could get back to your dastardly plots. And after that, you'd be the one making Agent Sweetie Drops cry. The end.